Well, hey friends and neighbors, this is Chuck out at Sheraton Park Farms. Welcome back to the farm. So today we've got some turkeys that we got to process. Um, on video before last, uh, we talked a little bit about how we'd had an attack on our pasture-raised turkeys out in the field. Something had gotten into them and had, uh, you know, ended up killing six of them, uh, five of them that we found the carcass for, and one of them we never even found the carcass on it. Um, Four of them were injured, so we went ahead and got four of them done that day. But today, we got to finish them up. Uh, we got 16 left. We're going to get them loaded up on the trailer. We're going to leave them in the tractor, load them up on the trailer. Um, we'll show you how we're going to do that. We're going to bring them down to the processing room, and uh, we're going to get those birds processed. Um, we're going to do a full showing of the exact setup and how we go through processing those birds to get them ready to go in the freezer. The majority of these are going to end up being ground turkey or we're going to make some uh, turkey sausage this time around so kind of excited to see how that turns out may not get that done today because that meat will really need to be super cold um, before we start putting it through the grinder but anyway um, come on with us hang out for a little while we're going to get those turkeys we're going to bring them down to the uh, processing room I'm going to walk you through that and uh, let's just see how the day goes hang around with us for a little bit Okay, we're about set up, ready to go. A um, couple of differences on the turkeys as opposed to the chickens. Um, we back the uh, tractor that the turkeys are in up onto the trailer uh, instead of trying to put them in the cages or crates or something like that because it's just too cramped and we don't want them to be totally uncomfortable uh, while they're waiting. So we back the entire tractor up there, door to the end so that we can get in and get out, lesson learned from last time. I uh, had to do a lot of walking around and, and trying to get them out of the front. That didn't work out very good. Um, next, kill station set up. Uh, we do use a quite a bit larger uh, kill cone than we do for the chickens, uh, simply because of the bird's size. We got the scalder set up, ready to go, and then the plucker. And after they come out of the plucker, they're going to go over into the uh, into the water bath, and we'll put some more we'll put some more ice in that here in just a few minutes. So. That's the outside, real similar to what we do for the chickens. Now let's walk inside and we'll uh, show you some different stuff we got set up for today. And then we're gonna walk through uh, real specifically how to do, uh, how to do a turkey evisceration um, cut up the whole deal. Coral's practicing. All right, so inside, again, this is the cold water bath that the uh, scalded, or the Pluck turkeys are going to come out of. We've got our evisceration station set up over here. We've washed everything down really, really good this morning. Sprayed everything down with a 10% bleach solution. So I think we're we're ready to go on that. But these are our evisceration stations. We are going to save out the livers, so we'll put that down in a in a bowl of ice. 
once the turkeys are eviscerated, uh, they're going to come over here and they're going to drop into a second chill tank. Um, that water is already cold. We put a bag of ice in; it's already melted. We're going to put some more ice in it. Now today, some of these turkeys are going to be cut up for ground turkey. So we built these deboning stations uh, out of just some one-inch PVC pipe. Um, basically just a square with a uh, center runner in the middle with a T, a vertical with another T on top for the turkeys to sit on, and Coral's already working on one that we had had to process the other day after we had our little turkey attack. And you can see that thing works out pretty good to hold the uh, hold that turkey up and hold it in place. So once those are done, once the deboning's done, uh, the turkey will come over here into a bin. We are going to save out wings and drumsticks today. We'll package those up um, for sale. So we do two drumsticks per pack. And I think we do four turkeys or four wings in a pack. Six, Six wings in a pack. And so we've got our cut up here uh, for ground. Once that's done, um, it'll, we're going to have to move this around, but it'll go into the grinder and we'll grind the, uh, grind the turkey up and have it packaged up for ground. I think we are going to do a little bit of turkey sausage this time around. Um, so we'll show that, show how that's working. And uh, everything's going to be vacuum sealed. We got some nice vacuum seal bags for the uh, ground turkey and the sausage today. So there's the setup. Um, Sondra and Coral are in here. Uh, Ashton and David are outside. They're going to be helping with that process out there. But I think we're, I think we're ready to get started here. So they're finishing up a couple of those birds. If you've not seen that video, I'll post a link to it down below. The other night we had something get into our turkeys and uh, we lost six and they were within two days of coming up here to process. So financially that's a little bit of a hit, but it's farming and sometimes it just, that kind of thing happens. So let's get to, get to processing these birds. Okay, so on the dispatching of the turkey, what we do is Ashton's gonna grab a hold of the windpipe in front of the neck. And he's gonna pull it forward towards him. And then he's just gonna take his knife and it's a real quick puncture all the way through. And then a slice to the right, a slice to the left. And that should get the jugular vein in the carotid artery. And he's starting to go ahead and start to bleed a little bit now. The reason that we do that is instead of cutting the head off, Whenever you make a laceration on the jugular vein in the carotid artery, the turkey's going to start to bleed. And as he starts to bleed, his blood pressure is going to go down, and the brain is going to send a message to the heart saying that, hey, the blood pressure is going down. We need to pump harder and faster. And so the heart's going to pump harder and faster, and all that blood's going to continue to flow out through that laceration. The brain's going to keep saying, hey, the blood pressure's too low, harder, faster, harder, faster, and it's going to continue to bleed out. So we get a good bleed out on the turkey and that way we don't get a lot of blood in the joints and you get those black spots a lot of times you'll get that on the uh, chicken that you buy at the grocery store yep. all right so after the birds uh, been dispatched uh, we're going to drop it in the scalder and we do these man we do this manually instead of using a shackle just because these birds are so big and they don't fit on the shackles really well and the trick on the skull is you want to get the bird in there and do exactly like what Dave's doing, kind of slosh it around a little bit so it's get good contact with the water to the skin. And then just leave that bird in there for, you know, what we do, Dave, about 90 seconds or so. Yeah, yeah about 90 seconds. The water's 150 degrees. Um, so far this morning, we've been getting real good scald on them, so it seems to be working, working pretty good. And, uh, turkeys are a little bit different than chickens. Um, they are a little... They are a little tougher, a little hardier. And, uh, this makes a little bit of a difference on them. Okay, now once the skull's done, what David's going to do is he's going to take the feet and the head off. Um, the reason we do that is these birds are just so big, they take up so much real estate inside the uh, plucker that it just doesn't, just doesn't pluck very good. So we just take the feet off like you normally would on a chicken. Pull the feet down, find the knee joint, a couple of last, couple of cuts through there, and boom, feet are off. Pretty easy. Then we're gonna grab the head. We're gonna pull the head off. Just a twist. And turkey heads are a little bit more difficult to get off than chicken heads. So, a couple of twists, 
good pull. Sometimes you gotta take the knife and pinch it off. And that's it. And then we're gonna turn the pusher on. Sometimes we'll have a few feathers that just need hand plucking, but this uh, this plucker ends up getting about 90% of the feathers off these birds. And it works really good. That thing got really good, didn't it? Yeah, I'm just getting armpits. Just armpit feathers. So to start with, you make a cut at the top of the, or at the bottom of the throat, top of the crop, pull it apart, and then you find the crop, or the crawl, and this is it right here, this whole thing. So you come, and it's attached to the skin and to the meat, so you kind of have to tease it out. And the way I do it is with my thumb. And you just kind of pull it away. Just like that. So that's the crop detached. And you can see there's the esophagus. And here's the trachea. So the next thing I do is I put my, my thumb behind the esophagus and trachea. And pull my fingers through. And then I pull it. And that releases both of them. So later on when you're ready to pull all of the guts out, this will come with it. It won't be stuck up in the neck. So the next cut is right at the keel. Make a small incision. Make sure you get all the way through to the abdominal cavity. Put your finger in and pull it apart. Just like that. And then you reach in, find the heart, pull it out, put it over here in the bucket. And then I go in with my hand, with basically just some blunt dissection, pulling all of the connective tissue away from the outer abdominal wall. And then I go in and find... the other end of the crop and the trachea and here comes there's the trachea so I just put it in the bucket and then I'll find the, the esophagus again and pull it and there's the crop it came out the bottom and then I just kind of cut all of the entrails in my hand and pull it out so it all comes out together. And then the last thing we'll do is, so the, the gizzard and some of the intestines are connected with connective tissue here, so we just pull that apart. And then the last thing we do to free the intestines from the carcass is cut down one side of the vent. So you see that cut? Come over and cut down the other side, and then go around the back, and that's that has released all of the intestines. And then I'll go back in with my hand and get the lungs. And the lungs are attached to the ribs, so you have to put, get your fingers in there between the lungs and the ribs, and the lung comes out as one piece. And you got to do both sides. There they are. So 
so this bird's basically done. Put it into the water, wash it out real good. And then we will detach the liver. We save the livers, the gizzards, and the hearts. Well, probably not the hearts, just the gizzards. Because we have found that there are folks around here that like turkey gizzards. So we just kind of flavor this liver till we get it all detached from everything but the gallbladder. So we've got it released from everything but the gallbladder. Here's the gallbladder. And you want to try to get this liver separated from the gallbladder without breaking the gallbladder because if, if this breaks and bile gets all over everything, it can stain your meat and then you've got a turkey that you can't sell. So I hold, I pinch my thumb and finger against the opening of the gallbladder and then just pull the liver away. So there's the liver. And then the rest of this goes in the bucket for composting. And then this goes over in the bucket in the cold water. So that ended up being the day pretty much. We uh, got all the birds processed, got everything cut up, and I didn't do any footage of it, but we tried to run them through the grinder, and uh, it was just gonna be too tough to run those birds through the grinder until they were, for, until that meat was frozen and you know more solid, because it just kind of gums up the uh, gums up the grinder. Got some stuff that need to be needs to be uh, composted. So I'm gonna put the bucket on the tractor here. We're gonna do that, but uh, also. Had some friends come over today, uh, Joe, who has a farm about 25 minutes down the road down in Siler City. Him and his boys came over today. He's got three, uh, three young boys, five, four, and three, and those kids are just a hoot, man. They are, they are real farm kids. We, we looked out here and they were, they were out here behind the tree using the, behind the tree for what it's supposed to be for. Um, but they're, they're cute. It's fun to have them over. And, uh. Appreciate Coral, Steve, David, and uh, Ashton today. If it wasn't for those folks, there's no way we could have got this done. We've just got such good friends and folks that help us out, get all the work done, and we just can't thank them enough. But uh, anyway, I'm going to post a link to a couple of videos, some other stuff we got going on over here. Uh, check that out. The subscribe button's going to pop up. If you've not hit that subscribe button, please hit that subscribe button. Follow along with us. we got a lot of stuff going on. Getting into fall of the year, and even more is going to be happening. So uh, anyway... Appreciate y'all watching. We'll see you on the next one. Thanks.